This is Jim Goodenow from Washington, D.C., reporting to Radio for Peace. This afternoon, I'm sitting with Daniel Ellsberg in his home. I would like to have Dan now report to the world his positions and thoughts of current events regarding the Balkan bombings. Dan? watched American bombers on television over Serbia, I had a very sickening feeling that this is where I came in. 34 years ago, I was in the Pentagon as the United States government launched attacks on North Vietnam. It was apparent within weeks of the onset of that attack, uh, just as it has been within days uh, in this case, that the bombing had no chance of achieving its objectives in that case. That didn't lead to an early end for that bombing. The objectives weren't modified. They were never achieved, even when we turned to a ground invasion of South Vietnam. And yet the bombing went on for seven and a half years. I believe that once again we're pursuing objectives that are quite unachievable by any military means, either bombing or invasion. And uh, unless we modify those objectives, the bombing in particular can go on indefinitely, and there may be increasing pressure to achieve them eventually by an invasion, which indeed could lead to an independent uh, Kosovo protected by an international or NATO force. That's feasible, though at a very high cost in NATO lives, but much more significantly, I think it would be a Kosovo significantly emptied of uh, Albanians because even if there was the possibility for the and there would be the possibility for external refugees to return hundreds of thousands of Albanian Muslims now living in Kosovo who have not left two thirds of the population of that province have not left yet over a million are still there I think hundreds of thousands of them who are now living there would be dead in the event of an invasion strategy. Therefore, I'm glad that the administration has so far ruled out such a, or rejected such an approach, though I don't count on them to uh, maintain that if the, if they maintain the current objectives, which include NATO forces throughout Kosovo, led by the U.S. essentially, or by NATO, throughout Kosovo and the entire exclusion of Serb forces from all of Kosovo, including northern parts, which together would mean essentially the independence, certainly the separation of Kosovo from Serbia. And I believe that that is a, um, um, an, an outcome that will not be accepted peaceably or without fighting, uh, not only by Milosevic, but essentially by any leader who might replace him. The Serbs are united behind Milosevic very commonly in the demand that Kosovo remain under the sovereignty of Serbia for historical, cultural, ethnic reasons that are very deep to their sense of identity. And uh, I think Milosevic is in effect responding to a widespread sense of national identity in Serbia when he refuses to give up sovereignty over Kosovo. Given the strength of the independence movement, you know, initially autonomy and now an independence movement among Albanians, that would seem to be an irreconcilable conflict with the people, the majority population of that conflict, of that province. I think there has been a possible compromise that could end the conflict that has been available since before the bombing began and uh, at any point during the bombing so far and is available right now. In fact, as of this moment with the statement by the uh, G8 including Russia, there does seem to be the basis of a compromise settlement embedded in an, a fairly ambiguous statement the U.S. is still choosing to interpret it as an, an endorsement of their maximal NATO demands, which include an international force led by NATO throughout Kosovo and the exclusion of all Serb forces from all of Kosovo. Uh, if 
that interpretation were insisted on by the U.S., I said, I do not believe there will be an end to the fighting. But, as I say, the terms, the current terms of that statement are broad enough to allow uh, other interpretations and to spell out just one of them, which I think could, in effect, end this conflict. There could be an international force consisting essentially of two parts. One, essentially Russian, Eastern European, and non-NATO, which could occupy the northern parts of Kosovo, which are the, at the heart of Serb feelings of identity, the, nor the historical sites, historical battlefields, and monasteries that um, I think the Serbs will fight to retain. But a Russian or East European presence in there might be accepted by the Serbs as an adequate proxy for their own forces in that area, which they could then withdraw with assurance that they, their claims of sovereignty would remain and would be respected by the Russian forces. NATO forces, including U.S. forces, could be in the southern half of Kosovo, where the NATO forces would provide a protectorate that the Albanian refugees, now external there, could come back to in assurance that they uh, uh, they would be protected. You know? And more than that, uh, with some expectation that over time, um, the formal Serb sovereignty, which would be uh, proclaimed in the interim at least, would give way to effective autonomy and really effective independence of that part of Kosovo. That would involve significant compromises, concessions by the Serbs, and I say by Milosevic, but not only Milosevic, by the Serbian nation, to accept that uh, effective or formal even independence of the southern part of Kosovo. It would be uh, not make the KLA, uh, the, Korea, the uh, Kosovo Liberation Army, um, happy either, since they demand independence for all of Kosovo. And it would certainly involve a concession for the U.S., because it would not uh, meet the NATO demands, which the president is still proclaiming, of NATO uh, control, essentially, over all of Kosovo. So it means concessions by all sides. At the same time, and, and an effective partition of Kosovo, without, however, having to proclaim a formal partition, since uh, formally you would have a, a single international force uh, that happened to have two zones in it. Um, so you have uh, the acceptance uh, of Serbian sovereignty, at least in the interim, over all of Kosovo, effective sovereignty over at least the northern parts of Kosovo, and a, an effective protectorate for Albanian Muslims to return to in a large part of Kosovo. The alternative, I think, to some solution like that is continued war and uh, continued bombing at the least, which uh, could go on not for weeks and months, but easily go on for years with increasing civilian casualties, uh, increasing destruction of a society, uh, you know, in a, a war not authorized by the UN, not authorized by the U.S. Congress or the Constitution, an illegal, aggressive war with proclaimed intentions which appeared humanitarian and benevolent but uh, which it never had any chance of achieving uh, and therefore uh, a war which is in no way justified by the uh, humanitarian um, catastrophe which it confronted and um, or, or by anything else uh, simply an unjustified aggressive war which could get worse to keep on these more ambitious objectives of returning uh, all of um, Kosovo to NATO control in order for, for the benefit of the Al Albanians, but at the cost of uh, shearing off uh, Serbian claims of sovereignty to their historic site. To maintain those objectives could indeed lead to pressure to the only kind of military operation that could achieve that, and that is a ground operation. In that case, I believe, the Serbs under Milosevic have shown a brutality, first in their their counterinsurgency campaign, starting last year, against the 
Kosovo Liberation Army, which was a very small, uh, small force at that time. And then more recently, since the bombing began, in what amount to ethnic cleansing operations in Kosovo, they've shown a brutality that I think would express itself in very massive killing of males of military age, which is a very broad category there, between, say, 15 and 60. Uh, I don't think that we could expect, in the event of the prospect of invasion, for the Serbs to leave alive many males still in Kosovo to join the, the Kosovo Liberation Army or to help the invasion forces. And that could mean the slaughter of 100,000 to 200,000 or more humans, males. As for the rest, they've already shown a willingness to use them as human shields, in effect, in small ways. And I think if they were faced with an invasion, we would be uh, confronting city fighting and town fighting being fired at from buildings which were crammed with Albanian women and children. And we would be challenged, and our forces would be challenged to massacre those people in the course of our military operations. I think these considerations should rule out ground invasion, but I'm not confident that it would, that it would have that effect if this conflict isn't ended quickly. So I hope very much that there will be political pressure from around the world and in my own country on Congress and from Congress to the President to demand that uh, these current framework being discussed by uh, with Russia and the UN be interpreted in such a way as to bring this conflict to an end. It's, if it does so, it will be ending in a way that it should have been begun, namely with uh, turning to the UN and to Russia specifically as key elements in this, and to the UN for the, as the only place that can authorize uh, any such arrangements. <clears throat> Actually, whatever the humanitarian concern of the, um, the NATO leaders, the officials not only in the US, but in the UK and Germany and elsewhere, may have been at the beginning. I'm afraid that uh, their sense of what was feasible for them to do and what was appropriate for them to do was very strongly colored by a desire to achieve a victory for NATO in a new role, uh, which effectively was a role supplanting the, uh, that of the UN and to substitute NATO, essentially, under the effective control of the U.S. for the authority of the U.N. That was not a worthy uh, goal at all. And to think that our goals in this have been unquestionable uh, and totally legitimate and uh, appropriate is, I'm afraid, to uh, flatter those interests uh, in, a, in a way that will, will only mislead us in the future. <clears throat> 